love you, Beth. My husband was calling. I'm logged in as my husband, but if it works, that's okay. Right, Patricia? You can still hear me. We're going to just do the I whole thing. hear you perfect. Again. Yes, dear. Hello? Okay, he butt dialed me. Awesome. Let me give everybody, I don't, we don't have any live viewers yet. Um, we prayed in the spirit. We shut some things down. Woo, woo. Somebody's here. They said, woo, woo. Yay. I'm going to be Richard for tonight, everybody. We're going to start the whole webinar all over again. But I do need you guys praying for us as leaders and intercessors. I know a lot of you carry that gift on here. Please be praying for us and we will be praying for you for this webinar. I'm trying to see who is live now. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm just going to refresh it. I yeah, just put it on okay. my phone. That's okay. That way you can see the comments. I'm just trying to see. Oh, Valerie's here. All right. Can you believe it? We finally got in after an hour. We're going to start the whole class all over again, guys. So we'll be starting it. Oh, my husband's calling probably to make sure. Yes, dear. I am you. I'm going to be you and we're going to teach and it's going to be good. Okay. I'm live. It's working. <laughs> yes. Yes, dear. Love you. Bye. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Always have to honor your husband's. He's out of town working. I always choose to honor him first. So he was working on it to make sure I'm going to be him. We'll just, I'll just, I'm going to have Richard's name. I'll be Richard Stutzman. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be Richard Stutzman for this class, guys, because my husband had to jump hoops to pay for this class under a different name so we can get here. But hallelujah. We're going to start all, all right. over. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. All right. Uh, do you want me to contact anyone? It's totally up to you, babe. You can go for it. We're going to get this information out. I'm just excited for it to work. I've never had this happen before. So we're starting the whole class all over again. So I'm hoping everybody can get back on because I know it'll run a little bit later. But hey, if not, you they can watch it later. All right, Patricia, you want to invite the Holy Ghost this time? <laughs> you want to pray? Oh, Lord God, Holy I Spirit, all we love you. I erased all those videos in case you're looking for them because of all the confusion and distraction the enemy was trying yeah. to bring. No more. They're erased. We're starting over. So pray well, in, Patricia. Spirit. Thank you. Holy Lord. Spirit, we just invite you. We just invite the yes, King of Kings. We just invite your glory. Yes, we just invite your presence. And we thank, thank you, Lord, you. that you are here and thank that you. wisdom and revelation are being released right now. May everybody's eyes of their understanding be enlightened today, that every veil would come off, that they would see, they would hear, they would know, and we would all have a teachable spirit. Tonight, yes. that we would yeah. hear in your kingdom you, and we would see. So thank we would know God. the truth. So, thank Papa, you. we thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Come in your power. Come in your power. Come in your glory. Amen. Shift it. Thank you for shifting Shift it, it, Papa. Thank you, Lord. Shift all it. All right. Amen. So we're going to start all over. And um, that way, the, the people that didn't log on and the people that heard you will hear it a second time. But I just believe that um, revelation will come to you even as we talk about the scriptures. We just started talking about the discerning of spirits. And obviously, through all this, the enemy hates this gift. But we love this gift because with this, <laughs> uh, we love this gift because it shows us what heaven is doing. Let's just be real. I mean, that's the bottom line of this gift. Um, I'm going to share a few scriptures and then that we talked about earlier that I want you guys to meditate on this week to really just take in these. Oh man, I just feel it shifting. Thank you, Papa. Just release your glory on everybody watching right now. Whoa, like waves of your glory, the frequency of heaven. I release the frequency of heaven of everybody watching and yeah. in the airwaves around this webinar. Yes. Pour it out like rain. Whoa. Yeah, Lord, pour it out. Like rain, like rain, refreshing. 
wipe off all the distraction around their minds where the enemy tried to bring confusion to this webinar. I just release the glory over your mind. I just declare you will walk in the gift of discerning of spirits. This is yours. This is your portion. Thank you, Lord. Just brush over them a fresh wind of Holy Spirit around their house. A fresh wind. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord. You, All right. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I'll I'll go over the scriptures really quick and then I'll let Patricia start describing the gift of discerning of spirits or distinguishing spirits and the difference between the two. Um, the first scripture that the Lord wanted me to share with you guys is first Corinthians 12, 10. And it talks about how God gives the gift of faith, the gift of prophecy, miracles, tongues, and all this stuff. But it also talks about discerning of spirits. And that's one of the things that me and Patricia, it's one of our strongest gifts. So when we walk in this, we want to be able to give you the foundation scripturally to be able to share biblically what this is and have a language for it. As me and Patricia talked about earlier, the problem with this gift is it's not really talked about except Jennifer Vez and James Gall. That's the only two I know that have talked about this gift. And they don't really have a language to describe it. Would you agree, Patricia? Yeah, they don't. No, they don't. I mean, there's others that have taught on it years past, like Kenneth Hagin and John Wimber and Dark Prince. But they're all generals that have gone home to be with the Lord. Amen. So we're the next generals that God's raising up in an army to teach people the truth. And that's why there's been opposition tonight, because this is something the enemy doesn't want taught because we got a first heaven, second heaven and third heaven we're dealing with, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Truth. All right. So as it talks about in first Corinthians 12, 10, about the gift of discerning the spirits. We also went into Luke 5, 22 through 23 about Jesus, Jesus knowing the thoughts of the people around him. He discerned and said, why do you argue in your hearts? So me and Patricia were talking about there's different times that this gift, if you operate in it already, or if this is brand new to you, you will discern others' thoughts. And there's the scripture for it. So we're laying foundation that this is a gift from the Holy Spirit. That's what the first scripture is talking about the second scripture is talking about how you will discern thoughts it's a part of revelation that flows with this gift and the third scripture the lord gave me was ephesians 4 18 through 19 where paul prayed the eyes of their heart would be open and that was he was talking about their spiritual eyes that's where you discern that's where you see in the spirit so you flow and, and Patricia brought up a great point because even James Gall said he prayed that every day over himself. Patricia said she declared that every day because when you declare that the eyes of your heart and you speak that first over yourself yeah. this week, you're going to start <laughs> walking in discernment. You're yeah. going to start walking and seeing more and understanding more. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just thank feel you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The last scripture I wanted to share with you guys is 2 Kings 6, 17. And Elijah prayed upon the servant's eyes, Lord, so that they open them up so that they may see. He was not talking about the physical eyes. He was talking about the spiritual eyes that is in the heart. And so there's just four examples. And Patricia's going to share more. I'm going to share more. But I want you to make those your foundational yeah. scriptures. Because people will challenge you on this. What? You mean you, you see angels? You see demons? People will challenge you on this. And you're going to have to have scriptures to say, yes, this is the gift that I walk in. And these are the scriptures. Don't you agree, Patricia? Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Good, yeah. good foundational scriptures. Because that's what's going to really allow you to be able to explain this as this increases in your life. That's why I want you to go through the word and meditate on those scriptures this week. Because you want to make, like when the Lord gave me a vision about this webinar and the people on it were going to be planted and they were going to be in deep soil. It's going to be the root. So you want a foundation in the word as you come up and grow in this. As, as we teach you the foundational principles, tonight yeah. we're going over the very basics. We want to go over the buried basics because it's important to have a strong foundation. So when then stuff rises up, 
you won't back down. If you know right. this is a gift from the Holy Spirit, God's called you in it. You've got to have a fortitude in this gift. You've got to know it's from the Holy Spirit as 1 Corinthians 12, 10. And realize you have to cultivate it like every other gift. Amen. Amen. All right, Patricia, I'll let you share some of the um, descriptions. You had a definition. I just want you guys to hear it. Um, I wrote some things down on how I des described discernment and some generals of the past, and so did she, and I love the ones that the Lord gave her. They were okay. good. Well, let me just give you the definition of discernment is just basically the act of perceiving and discerning something, having that gut feeling. And I always tell people, go by what you feel in your gut. Okay, go by that feeling that you feel in your gut. Some people are like, ah, they ignore it and they just go somewhere else. But always go by that feeling in your gut. Proverbs 3.21 says this by Do uh, Dr. Brian Simmons wrote the Bible, uh, translated it, I should say, as a theologian on uh, the Passion Translation. It says, my child, never drift off course from these two goals for your life, to walk in wisdom and to discover discernment. Don't yeah. ever forget how they empower you. So wisdom and discernment will empower you because there is wisdom that comes from heaven. And that's why, April, we do need to pray that our eyes of our understanding are enlightened. It's extremely important. Yeah. You know, general, I want to break it down. General discernment means it is a product of experience, discipline, and study. Okay, so your experiences in life, the discipline you make by studying the word every day and life experiences. Discerning of spirits is a spiritual gift imparted by the Holy Spirit. So, you know, people say that, you know, I was born with this. I believe it with all my heart. The recognition of it was when I was four years old. Some yeah. people, they don't grow into it later in life. Some people have leaders that impart it in them. I thank God that I did have those type of leaders in my life, you know, uh, that were generals that did do an impartation to even a greater level. But um, it's not something to boast on, but it is a great gift to have. Yeah. So today we're going to distinguish if you're just a general discerner, you study the word and you want more and more and more. We're going to teach you week by week how to step into this and you will have a great impartation when this course is over. Amen. OK, so um, the Lord showed me all believers can grow in discernment by meditating on the word, like I said. And as you um, as you grow in your faith, you're going to grow in the word. You're going to grow is being in the secret place. Keep yourself in the secret place. And what do you mean in the secret place? If you can give yourself even 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes a day, if that's minimal, all you can do to just lay in the presence of the Lord and say, God, I'm giving you this time. Show me the things in the spirit I need to know, Lord. And he will show you. Um, you're going to another key for discerning discernment is observing others. It's important when I go to conferences or I go where the Lord sends me, I observe what's going on in my atmosphere. And then I align myself with others who have the same gift like me in April. Amen. Okay. And you're going to mature in that as you observe even. When I go to a conference or even taking a class like this, I will ask the Holy Spirit, why am I going there? It Amen. might be something God wants to show us. Amen. Okay. Amen. Yeah, I agree. It's an assignment. And it's very important that you know that, that when you go somewhere, that you know why. Because God can open the heavens and show you a whole realm. Yeah. Yeah. Because we are seated in heavenly places. Yeah. And if we're seated in heavenly places, we see what heaven's doing. I just yeah. think about my mom as she says that. I immediately thought about you, mom. You went to Billy Graham's um, place where you held that conference and I know you said you're going again. So ask the Lord why he sent you to that Billy Graham place. Uh, I forget the name of it. The code was that where you stayed at mom, if you're still on here, but the Lord immediately brought that. So press into why he took you there. 
Amen. That's really key uh, because, you know, you want God to send you places where you're going to get impartations. Let me, can I give an example of like what I experienced? Me and April were just at a conference at Fresh Fire and basically God showed me that he had something for me. Well, here after four days of sitting in meetings, I thought, well, I don't, I don't, see anything for me. And all of a sudden on the left side of the room, a 12 foot angel stepped in and the Lord said, it's the angel of truth. It stood at me, stared at me. And the next thing I knew, the man of God said, woman of God, stand up. I have a word for you. So that's just an example of discerning of spirits. I saw it come in. Do you understand what I mean? I saw it come in. God allowed me to see it. And we're going to go over different levels of that too today. Amen. Yes, mom's in the cove. Amen. Also, I wanted to share something that God showed me. He said, this general discernment and discerning of spirits are different, but they're related. Amen. They are related. Amen. Amen. I, I agree with that. And, and I love one of the ways. Um, <laughs> I love how it, we can think about what our mind wants to say, what discerning of spirits is. But I love how Jennifer Avez, um, cause she put a language on it too. She described it as the ability to obtain sharp perceptions or judge well. But um, I know that, don't you agree that your sharpness grows as you walk in this? Yes, my sharpness grows. And I will tell you from just experience from young age to now, uh, my experience grows by soaking in the secret place too yeah. and aligning myself with leaders, apostolic leaders who also moved in this gift. So mm -hmm. by having both of them, having friends, having uh, well-balanced apostles, I should say that, and soaking in the presence of the Lord, I get such downloads from God. It's incredible. And I Amen. love that. And you can have the same. Amen. Truth. I yeah. Love it. So... One of the ways um, I loved also the dictionary and that the way I studied it out, I said, Lord, let me just tell them in a brief um, matter what the dictionary described it in. They also said sharp, sharp perceptions to judge well. It said a discerning individual. Now, this is what the dictionary said, not a minister, not a well-known general. The yeah. dictionary said a discerning individual is considered to possess wisdom. And to be of good judgment, especially with regard to a subject ma matter often overlooked by others. Yeah, that's good. I thought, wow, even the dictionary acknowledges that. Yeah. And it's so sad. I really believe that God's heart. I felt his heart as I was preparing you guys for this webinar God wants this gift out. This is the time. This is the season. He's raising up people to talk about this gift. He's raising generals. I mean, I believe we're going to see it just grow around the body of Christ because it's so necessary in today's time and where he has us at in this season. Yes, it's extremely necessary to have it extremely necessary in the hour that especially the hour that we're living in. So there's no gray areas. It's just black and white. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I agree. You know, Amen. I just want to read something that Derek Prince said. I love what he said. He said, discerning of spirits is the supernatural ability to recognize and distinguish between not only good and bad, but various class of spirits, the Holy Spirit, yeah. good angels, fallen angels, demons, evil spirits, and the human spirit discernment. It is a yeah. form of direct perception where knowledge is the impartation of the fact. And Amen. we need knowledge works along with wisdom. Amen. They work together. Amen. The Holy Spirit of wisdom, the Holy Spirit of knowledge, they work together. Just like counsel and might work together and Amen. knowledge and fear of the Lord work together. It works together. Amen. Yeah. I love also to another way that Jennifer Ives described it. We just want to give you some ways that generals have described it and what the dictionary describes it because you need to have a language. And sometimes it hears it, it just kind of it's like repetition. 
hear how this person described it, hear how this person described it, hear how this, because everybody's going to describe it different, but you're going to see perception as their main focus on most of the descriptions is perceiving information. It's not with your intellect. To get to discerning of spirits is absolutely not with your intellect. And I love it. That's why I'm bringing up how Jennifer Vez shared it. She said, it's the process of discerning that which is often misunderstood, ignored, or rejected. The reason that this gift is it's because a sensory process before it is ever an intellectual one. And a lot of times we have Greek thinking, thinking that we elevate logic and reason above emotion and spiritual. And we have inadequately shut down the internal mechanism by which this gift flows. Amen. That's really good. That's good. I want to read something by the late John Wimber, too. I love John Wimber out of Vineyard. And uh, he was an amazing man of God that um, went home before, I believe, before his time. But uh, discerning of spirits is the supernatural captiv captivity to judge whether the spirit is operating um whether wait a minute, um, whether the spirit is operating in, in to judge whether the spirit is human, demonic, or divine, which is really important that we know. Amen. So it's really I, a good word. Amen. Um, uh, I'm trying to see if I can give you all any more definitions of how... Um, I love also Jennifer Vez. I just quote her because she she processed working language. I've been out to California twice, and that's why I love her because she flows high in this gift. She also described it is um, the differences of discerning, but also it enables us to discern the hidden motives of the heart is what she added. So yeah. when you walk in discerning of spirits, she said it, it enables you to, to see the hidden motives of people's hearts around you. And she said, this gift embraces the hard to explain and the intangibles in the spirit realm. And so she's saying, you know, you will discern heart motives. You will have to sensory process. You can't rely on your intellect. You can't rely. Yes, you rely yeah. on wisdom with what to do with the information. but like Patricia said, it's the sensory realm. It's sight, it's smell, it's touch, it's hear, it's tasting. So none of this is intellect. It's all sensories. And I love what James Gall, uh, he adds the seventh sensory and it's the knower. You just know that you know what you sense in that person, in that situation or that region. You just know sometimes. Wouldn't you agree that as the seventh one, Patricia? Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we discern through senses. And we're going to go over that tonight, too, about all the different senses. And we're going to give examples of each one, too. Yeah, um, go, Hebrew, go ahead, sweetie. Hebrews chapter 5, 14 says it well. But solid food is for the mature. Yeah. Who, uh, who, because of practice, have the senses trained to discern good and evil. Okay, that's Hebrews 5.14. But solid food is for the mature mm -hmm. who, because of practice, have their senses trained to discover good and evil. Mm -hmm. And we have to have our senses uh, very open to the Lord to, to know what is good, what is evil, what is right, what is wrong. So mm -hmm. senses is very extremely important. And we're going to get into the, the five different senses, which is sight taste smell touch and hearing extremely important in the gift of discerning of spirits because that's what i love about this gift um because we all have the natural um sight smell taste but that's not our spirit man that's just the flesh right so why would it be any different for our spirit man not to have sight smell taste see in the spirit feel in the spirit i love it because that's the true us we are spirit. We are sons and daughters of God. If we are sons and daughters of God, we have to, like she said, mature. I would take this scripture and speak it over you, that you are mature, that you're eating the solid foods of this class. Amen. Amen. I agree. Because maturity is key to moving in the gift of discerning of spirits. And I've met a lot of people. I would say 80% of the people that I've met who even come close to walking this gift 
wind up becoming immature and are, are, are immature and they have to grow in the maturity because they're not paying attention. They're wow. using it as gossip or strife or bring an argument. And we have to stay away from that. We have to be concerned why God gave us this gift and how we can use it. It's key. Amen. Thank you. Amen. It's so true. And it's a process. So like I said, we're, wait, we're laying a foundation out for this class. We're giving you a lot of scriptures. We're describing it. Because sometimes you also need repetition to lay the foundation from different angles. Because yeah. you want to have your foundation strong. It will be challenged when you start discerning and you start seeing angels or sensing angels or tasting um, demonic or you know, flowing and discerning the human spirit or an angelic realm or even the demonic realm, you need to have your foundation solid. Yeah. And you know what I'm picking up tonight? These people who join this class, they're hungry. They are and hungry. Lord, show me, I'm just looking at like the names of the people and they're awesome. There, mm -hmm. there's, there's just something about this group of people that are coming on. They're so hungry to grow so deep and they're going to get it. The Lord will show me they're going to get everything that they're called to get in this class. Amen. Woo. And they're going to run with it like fire. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, That's Jesus. Awesome. I'm excited for you guys. I know, I know I was just praying the Lord to, to lead people to sign up that, that were need to be activated. So we just continue to say, bring them in, Papa, and expand their revelation about this gift. How many of yeah. you guys, I like to be interactive. How many guys have ever heard of this before? I know some of you guys have, but I like to see, like just say yes or no, or this is new. Um, I like to see what kind of experience we have. I know there's a little bit of a delay with, um, with the feed, but yeah, I can feel the hunger too. I'm excited. Me too. Um, you can go ahead and go uh, into some examples, Patricia. Um, if you want to do each century and give your examples and I'll just um, take a turn to share a couple that I've went, like when you bring up site, share yours and then I'll just share one or two things about site and we'll take turns. Amen. Okay. So we must learn to recognize and obey these promptings uh, every day of our life. Okay. So our, our spirit man doesn't rest. So we want to know, we want to walk in these. The first one that I've written down is um, the seeing, which is an avenue of perception. And um, one is, you know, an open vision. You know, you could be sitting anywhere and God could give you literally where it's like a, a your vision goes and something else comes before you and God gives you an open vision. Another one is what you call pictorial. God will give you pictures in your mind, pictures of like yesterday we were talking um, and you said you had a picture of a veil, a transparent veil. I, I had the same thing, but mine was like 15 minutes later. And what I saw, so there, yes, God will give you pictures. He will give you like motion pictures in your mind. He will give you an open vision. They're the, they're the things in seeing that God will give you, or he can open your eyes. Uh, let me share an example. In 2005, I was in a meeting and God said, I'm about to open your eyes today. And I'm about to show you how I operate in miracles. And I thought, what, what, you know, you know, I'm, this is in 2005 guys, we're in 2018. And I remember being in New York city in a meeting and I saw my eyes open and I saw a staircase wow. and I saw angels ascending and descending. And I thought, Oh my gosh, what is going on? This is two hours. Now I'm like sitting there looking at this and I'm watching the, an angel come down, talking to the man of God. I'm watching these angels from different forms come down and bring in body parts. It was the most amazing thing that I ever experienced. And I said to the Lord, why are you showing me this? Mm -hmm. And he said, because I want you to know how, how to know how heaven functions on earth and that you're not by yourself, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand and I'm working with you. And so are the angels because Psalm 91 says they accompany, they defend and preserve you and keep you in all your ways. So we're entertaining angels at every moment of the day. Amen. So that's, 
So I got to see different forms of angels with colors and different, some, some were small, some were big. And I thought, I better not say this to anybody. And the man of God comes in and he starts teaching. And this is the first word he said out of his mouth. God has opened the spirit realm today for people to see how God functions. Amen. It's true. That's simple. And I was like, wow, this is, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. <laughs> but for two hours, it's a long time to see that. And when I went home, I cried because it was so amazing. Amen. 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 I love it. Amen. So well, that's what they were designed for. You know, the we words were that, designed for it. You know, God is crying out for the sons and daughters of God to be made manifest. Why wouldn't we? as children of the most high God, be able to see what the father is doing. Why would he hide what heaven? I mean, that's what Jesus did everywhere. Jesus went, he brought heaven. He's Amen. seen what the Lord was doing. He's seen what the angels was doing. He's seen what needed to be casted out, what needed to be healed, what the miracles were. And it was with his spiritual eyes. Amen. So good. Thank you, Jesus. So good. And everybody, I can guarantee that everybody in this webinar, if they haven't seen, they're going to see. Amen. I stand in agreement with that. 100%. Yeah. The eyes of your heart. We just declare that over you right now. If you haven't seen in the spirit before, we declare the eyes of your heart will be open. And you'll Amen. see the hope of your calling. Amen. Open their eyes tonight, Lord. Open their ears, even during this webinar, that they see they have more dreams, more visions, more, more insight of the kingdom of heaven they've ever had before. I release that tonight over every individual in this webinar now. In the name of Jesus, I release it. And I thank you for it, Papa, in Jesus' name. Amen. And I want to I want to say this to you. I've laid hand on over 500 people in one one meeting with one of my leaders, and every single person in that meeting saw. Amen. So we're praying that they will see. You Amen. will see. Amen. And I'm telling you that you will see. Amen. That's awesome. It's exciting. It's exciting to see what God is. Yeah. Kind of grow and do through it, through you, you guys that have taken my webinars before. Like I said, keep us updated. And if you have any questions while we're teaching, I'm scrolling through the comments. That's why I look off to the right. I haven't got any questions yet. Kamika said she was back. That's awesome. So if you have any questions as we're going through this, feel free. This is interactive. You know, I love to to interact with you guys and to see you know, what questions you have about this gift. And we're going to go into more detail. Um, you want to talk about the senses now? Is that what you said, Patricia? No, I'm going to let you talk about seeing. We're going to take turns, okay. right? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So seeing in the spirit realm, that's how I started webinars. Um, I'll talk about the sensory um, realm that, that God has me in. Sometimes like what Patricia was talking about, I, I see an angel in my living room today. I was actually on the phone with her. Was it you? Yeah, I was going to say, I think I was on the phone with you. And so I asked God immediately and when I discern, because this is discerning of spirits. We're talking about sight right now. So I've seen an angel. I'm not telling you like some people see it like like this, like literally see it and then some people see it with their eyes of their heart i've seen it with the eyes of my heart i've seen an outline i've seen how tall he was i've seen a sword and so i immediately started pressing in and saying why is he here what is he doing and that's some um, um mm, man i just see the glory shifting here right now i just impart it right now i just felt a wave of it Amen. So i want to release that over you guys right now I just declare right now, I just feel the Lord right now. I just figure the fear of the Lord that, you, that some of you guys have suffered so much because you already carried this gift. And we just come in agreement right now and we declare recompense. I command all that remaining trauma to go right now. Right now. I just release the anointing, the inner healing anointing right now. Right now to break off all that trauma, all that post-traumatic stress. The enemy tried to shut you down and back you down and shut your mouth. But it is not going to happen. You are going to advance. You are going to advance the kingdom and you're going to walk in this gift. You're going to carry it. You're going to carry it. I just declare who, this word is for you're going to feel the power of the Lord and you're going to know. You're going to know. This is why you dealt. I see people dealing with terror at night. 
So we just shut that down. We break off any night terrors right now. And I declare that you will not be stopped in this gifting. I just declare grace. We just thank you, Lord, that we just commission the angels for the people on this webinar to carry this out. To carry this yeah. out right now. You draw a line in the yeah. sand for them, Papa. And you raise up a standard over their life. That you restore. We just come in agreement. We declare that you restore the years the locust has stolen from them. Right now. Yeah. Right now, right I'm in agreement. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. Whoa. Brush in like a Holy Spirit wind over their life, Lord. Bring in the lost promises. Bring in their inheritance, Papa. Thank you, Lord. I agree. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whoa. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whoa. Anything you want to add to that, Patricia? Do you see anything? And then I have somebody that asked a question. Yeah, go to the question. Go to the question. Oh, thank you, Lord. Um, so one question I have about discerning the angels is that I get so many visitations, but I get afraid and I cannot sleep. Does that mean I'm discerning something wrong if I get afraid? Okay, I'm going to say this. I've had an angel. It's only happened to me one or two times, but I've had an angel. They look like angels. They I've had angels come next to my bed and it looked just like an angel. It was white like an angel. It, it But I had fear and when I bound that thing, it shut down because sometimes angels come as light. So yeah. if you're feeling fear with that, it's not of God. Amen. Because when you have an angel that will come to you, um, uh, literally come to you in like by your bedside, you're going to have peace with it because it's going to bring such a presence from heaven with it that you're not going to have uh, any type of fear with it. Or okay. Terror. Or like I've had an angel come to me and said, fear not. Yeah. Uh, and because it, it came in full blown like a person. Yeah. And the first thing it said to me was fear not. And I thought, oh, OK. You know, so I didn't have the fear with it. But yeah. I was like, wow, this is different. You know, so, um, yeah, I mean, you're if you're having fear, that's not of God. And, and that's one of the things that we're going to talk about, um, Francis, during this webinar, is if you're having fear, just command that thing to leave and get out. And that's not of God. But we're, the word says we're going to go into about testing the spirits because the enemy likes yeah. to appear as angels of light. But we don't want that fear to shut down the gift. You don't want Absolutely. to. You, don't, you, you got to have more faith in God to keep you. Than to say, I had this experience with the bad angel. Now I'm not going to walk in my gift. The enemy would love to do that. You got to have more fear yes. in God's ability to keep you in, the, in this gift than the enemy's ability to deceive you. So uh, keep going. Don't let it yeah, be. Yeah, I was going to say that. that. Keep going. Fear. Yeah. Keep going. Don't yeah. let the enemy stop you and bring fear. Bind the, the Bible says to bind the strong man in the house, you spoil his good. Amen. So you just bind the spirit of fear and shut it down and, yeah. you know, command every ungodly thing out of that room and God will bring an encounter. You're being tested. Ooh, there you and go. And trying to test you to see where your weakness is, if you're going to feed into it or not. So I'm going to just say, I, lo I loose you from all fear yeah. and striving mm -hmm. in Jesus name and any rejection you feel with it in Jesus name. And I command right now in the name of Jesus for that all to go from your mind yeah. and that you have the mind of Christ yeah. and that you do hear his voice. Amen. Sound mind. Amen. Sound mind. That's an the, awesome question. Yeah, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. Okay. Now let's go into the sense of smell. Okay. Uh, which is a sense of smell. I wrote down, you know, um, the smell of roses or the smell of myrrh. I've been in services where I'm like, man, that smell. Were we in a conference recently, me and you, and we smelled something? We did. What was it? Was that lemon? Yeah, it was like a really pretty smell. It was beautiful. We were like, wow, this smells <laughs> really good. Well, if you smell something fresh like a rose or a flower or a lemon, I'm not talking about coffee, but I'm talking, you know, I'm being silly, but I'm talking about like something like a myrrh or like a fragrance of a flower. No, that's a heavenly fragrance. 
And you can get that not just in a conference. I'm talking about in your room, in a church, anywhere uh, that can come. You can, I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to tell you what happened to me. We have a little convenience store. We have Wawa's. Do you have Wawa's where you live? We don't. You like, you have a QT, right? QT? Yeah. Okay. Well, I went in, this was, this was so cute. I went in a store to take out money out of Mac. This was recent and I, and um, I could smell like a fragrance. It was like a perfume, but like, it was like more like a Frank frankincense. And I'm like, I could feel the glory in the entire store. And I'm like, Lord, I want to get my money. I want to find out who's carrying this. <laughs> so I just started walking around up the whole store and I'm like, Con, well, this is, you know, they're little, so they're little convenience store. So I'm walking around all of a sudden I seen this mama. And she was talking. I went up to her. I said, lady, I don't know you, but you brought the glory in this entire place. And I said, I smell the fragrance on you. And I said, I want what you have. I didn't even know this woman. Oh, that's awesome. I'm just sharing a silly story because it's not silly. But to me, it was so cute. And people are looking like, what? This lady prophesied over me. I didn't even know her. But do you know that she carried such fragrance in Took it in that store. Love it. I want that. I said, I want to be able to go into a store and release the glory of God like that and have the fragrance of the Lord following me. Am I right? Amen. So, okay. So that, that's two examples. And then I'm going to go on the negative side, which is the smell of sulfur. Okay. Or the smell of something, somebody smoking. I was in a restaurant one day and I smelled the cigarettes. And in New Jersey, we have no smoking zones. Okay. And all of a sudden I looked in a corner and I saw what looked to be half human and half cigarettes with a top hat on. And I said to the Lord, what is that? And he said, that's an addiction spirit. Yeah. Yeah. I've had that. It dissipated in seconds. But I saw it and I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, so we have to know we can smell this when there's addictions. Yeah. Okay. And even the sulfur smell um, that can come from unclean spirits. We don't necessarily have to know what they are or name them. Just know that you if you smell a smell that doesn't smell right, bind the unclean spirit and command it to go. Yep. Truth. Period. Don't even play with it. It's not even worth your time. No. You have the authority in you to do it. Amen. So there are just some examples of what of what smell could be. Yeah, and and that's one of the mistakes I used to make when walking in this gift. You know, I would smell something. I wouldn't know what it was, and I'd sit there and try to figure it out. Well, who cares? Bind it. You know, I was trying to grow. I wanted to see immediately. I wanted to know immediately. But you grow in this, so you don't always know immediately. 